What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. And this one is some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week 13 deadline. A little bit earlier than normal because the deadline is tonight. So don't forget that. It's 6.30 p.m. UK time. So set your captain, make your transfers, all that good stuff. In this one, I'm going to go for a couple of the lineups from last night, what that means for FPL moving forward. I'll talk through some of the press conferences, at least the ones we've had at the time I'm recording, answer some of your questions and very quickly talk about my team at the end as well. If you enjoy it, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, rate five stars if you listen on podcast. Let's get into it. So let's start with the Man United lineup from last night. It was the 3-4-2-1 again, which we're expecting Amrim to basically play every week. And one thing to note is that Bruno Fernandes started as a number six alongside Ugarte and played there the whole game. Even when Mason Mount, who was one of the tens, came off, it was Rashford that went on and played in that role. That is not ideal for FPL moving forward. Fernandes did end up in the box the odd time, but not as much as he would have done if he was playing as a number 10. So if he's going to play in this deeper role, I would say he's just no good to us from an FPL point of view. He's still going to play 90 minutes every game. He will get the odd attack and return. He's still on penalties. But you don't want to pay 8.5 million for a player that's playing number six right it's just not worth it now does that mean you've got to go out and sell him immediately not necessarily i think it depends on what your future moves are right if you're sitting there with fernandez and you know that whatever happens this week you're selling him to Saka in game week 14 and you've got the money to do it right now and the spare transfer i would just do it right Saka, wh whatever position fernandez ends up playing in that man united team long term Saka is going to be the better pick, right? So you should just go to Saka. If you're like me and you're not sure whether you're going to sell Fernandez or in Burmo, you don't really have the move right now to make the transfer, then I think you can give him the Everton game and see where he plays. It's not a guarantee that he plays as the number six again. It might be that Ugarte and Eriksen play or Casemiro and Eriksen. Whatever it might be, Fernandez might be a bit more attacking. The problem with him right now is... They don't really have good enough fixtures in the short term to warrant waiting to find out what's going to happen. Because even if he plays as a number 10 against Everton, who knows if he plays then as a number 6 against Arsenal. For what it's worth, as an idiot that just talks about FPL for a living, I thought Fernandes is a bit lost in that number six, uh, 6 position, especially when it came to defensive duties. I think it's just a bit of a waste. So I'd be surprised if he plays there long term. But also, I just can't guarantee it. Right now with Man United, it's a lot of guesswork. So if you've got the spare move, I'd get rid of him if that's going to be the plan anyway. If you're, if you're like me and not sure whether you're selling Fernandez or in Burmo, then you can give him the Everton game and then decide what to do. Nobody should be buying Man United attackers right now. Hoyland started up front, scored twice. I think long term, he will be in that position over Rashford. Doesn't mean that he will start in game week 13, though Rashford came on for about 25, 30 minutes. He could well play number nine against Everton. It's just hard to know. I would say the fact that Garnacho started again is a positive sign. Again, can't guarantee that he's going to start this week, but it's pretty clear that, well, based on two games, it's fairly clear he's going to get decent minutes under Amrim, just like he did under Ten Hag and under Van Nistelrooy. So I still quite like Garnacho. If I had him, I'd be tempted to play him against Everton if I don't have, you know, a, an eighth attacker that's better than him this week. I think Mats Rowey is excellent, like as a player, um, played right centre-back again, was talked up by Amarim, says he's fresh even though they've got so many games. I think he said something like that. I, look, I'm not going to sit here and say that any of these players are nailed apart from Anana and Fernandez, because things could change. But Mats Rowe is clearly going to be first choice. And I think at his price point, that's not a bad option. But it would only make sense to buy him if you don't need to play him next week right because you're not going to want to play him against arsenal or city in 14 16 so you could play him against everton play him against forest and then maybe play him 17 18 and 19 if you needed to and at 4.6 million i think he is that's not a bad price so he probably looks like the pick of the man united defenders right now and he did get an assist last night even though he played right center back and that was from open play as well so he is getting forward at times and he's just great. He's just a really good player. Probably one of the most bargain transfers Man United have had in recent times. One of the reasons they got him so cheap, by the way, is because of his injury record. It's not great. But if he can stay fit, I think he'll keep starting. In terms of game week 13, I would expect Dallo to come in instead of Malassia, left wing back. And he looked pretty good when he came on last night. Um, otherwise, it's, again, it's just a lot of guesswork. Will Mount and Garnacho start as the 10s again? 
Would it be Rashford as one of the tens? Possibly. I thought Mason Mount played pretty well, but that doesn't mean he's going to start again at the weekend. So short short version of this is the Ligt is probably nailed, but I'm not sure he's worth buying at that price. Matt's Rowry at 4.6, not bad. Fernandez, maybe give him another week depending on your team. But if you've got a transfer to move on to the pay you're going to get anyway next week, just do it now. So for Spurs against Roma, it was a front three of Brennan Johnson, Dominic Solanke and Hyun Min Son. And it's worth noting that Spurs did get a penalty pretty early on with both Solanke and Son on the pitch. And Son was the player that took it, which I think most of us were expecting. But it's still nice to get that confirmation. So Solanke not on penalties. Son looks to be first choice. In terms of Brennan Johnson, obviously a lot of people are worried because he got benched in game week 12. I'm still not convinced that is something that's going to happen regularly moving forward, but it's going to depend on what happens with Kulisevsky and Madison, essentially. So last night, it was Kulisevsky, Bentoncourt, and Saar, but for the league, Bentoncourt is suspended at the moment, so he can't play. So basically, it's either Ange drops Madison and plays like Saar and Basuma and Kulisevsky central, or he drops one of the more defensively minded midfielders and plays Madison or Kulisevsky, or he does what he did against City plays Kulisevsky on the right and Madison Central and two more defensively minded midfielders. What that's going to look like consistently moving forward, I'm not quite sure. But I think with Brennan Johnson, if you're sat there without a spare transfer to move him on, I think you can keep him for Fulham or home. I think there's got to be a good chance that he starts. He scored last night. His stats are still looking good. Is he an amazing long-term pick? Maybe not. But I don't think you need to panic straight away. If you've got Solanke... I also wouldn't panic just because he's not on penalties. There was a very little chance he was going to take them anyway. He's still got good stats, decent fixtures coming up. I guess it makes Son a little bit better now we have that confirmation. But he came off on the 76th minute, and I'm still not quite sure what his minutes are going to look like moving forward. Like at the start of the season, he was getting 90 minutes pretty consistently. But obviously at the start of the season, there was no midweek matches. And he picks up his injury... In the, in the league, he started four of the last five, played 69, 55, 90, and 62 minutes, and then 76 against Roma. I'm just not convinced with all the extra fixtures in December, we're going to see Son playing 90 minutes anytime soon. So if there's a consideration of Son versus Saka, there is only one option for me, and that is Saka. If you've done something stupid, like tripled up on Arsenal defence, maybe you could justify Son, because you can get him for free or something, but... I don't know. I think he's still a perfectly fine pick, but he ain't as good as Palmer, Saka, etc. That's for sure. In terms of the back four, Porro, Dragashin, Davies, and uh, Archie Gray, Ange Postacoglu spoke about Romero before the game. He said he's got a chance for the weekend, although he didn't make it sound like it was a guarantee. But if he's not back this weekend, he'll be back for the next match. So Romero missing is not great for that defense. Spurs put up like 3.6 XG. Attacking-wise, they were great, but they conceded like 2.3 XG. So clean sheets with Forster, no Van de Ven, possibly no Romero, don't look great. But I still think if you've got Porro, you could probably just play him against Fulham because there's not a huge amount of other guaranteed clean sheet defenders out there, apart from, of course, Arsenal. So for Arsenal, we did get quite a bit of information from Mikel Arteta last week. This week, not so much. On Gabriel, he said, wait and see, which I think is what most of us expected him to say. And on general team news, he said, not a lot because we have another training session. We have to see how the boys are today. A few weren't able to train yesterday. So if we take him at his word, there are some players that are doubts, but I'm not sure it should have much of an impact on your decisions. If you're thinking about buying the likes of Saka and Odegaard this week, I'm pretty confident they will play in game week 13 against West Ham. I would still transfer them in. Like We get this kind of stuff from Arteta most weeks. Last week, like I said, he did give us good info on Tommy Asu, Ben White, etc., which helped us know that Timber's minutes would probably be quite good. This week, not so much. So Saka Odegaard, if you're buying them, I think that's fine. On Gabriel, if you own him, I think you keep him. Like he's such a good long-term option. The fixtures are decent. The defense is great. He's got genuine set-piece threat as well. And there is no guarantee that he misses West Ham. And even if he does, it's probably something minor. So I think for most people, if you've got Gabriel, you just hold on to him and you just play him this week. That's what I plan to do unless we get any more information ahead of tonight's uh, deadline. If you were thinking about buying Gabriel... That's a little bit trickier. Maybe if you can put that decision off until 14 or you can just buy someone else instead, 
that would probably be the ultra safe move. I would still be tempted to buy Gabriel if that was your plan, though. I just think he will start. Like, he came off with discomfort against Sporting, but the game was won. They were never at risk of losing that. No issue taking off one of your centre-backs. And I'm not saying there was no issue there, but I just think... I've got, like, I've got no information on this, so I am just guessing. But I feel like... I said this the other day. If that was like 1-0 lead they were protecting, I just wonder if Gabriel would have stayed on. Would he have made it through the rest of that match? Possibly. Um, so definitely keep Gabriel. Maybe don't buy him, but I think for most people you could still do that. Saka, etc. Probably still fine. Triple up on Arsenal looking great moving forward. Mine would be, ideal one would be Saka, Gabriel, and then one of Raya or Timber. Um, I think Timber's minutes will still be good moving forward. I wouldn't pay the extra for California. I don't think he offers enough over timber to warrant the extra money and that's about it on arsenal i think so Arna slot held his liverpool press conference on thursday and for anyone that didn't see both canate and connor bradley went off injured during the real madrid game on wednesday night now slot didn't rule either of those two players out but he did say they're still being assessed the nice thing about getting a thursday press conference is i could include it in this video but it does mean slot doesn't have the most up-to-date information i'm sure he'll get more info today from the medical team about those two players but we obviously now won't hear about it i think for most people you don't own connor bradley anyway and you definitely shouldn't be buying him if you've already got canate he's probably a long-term pick because of how good the liverpool defense is and how good the fixtures get from kind of game week 15 onwards i don't think i would panic about him unless you're in a position where you've only got two other fit defenders i would just play someone else because city at home is not a great fixture for a clean sheet anyway and if you've got another defender, even if they've got a pretty poor fixture, it's no worse than Canate. So I would probably look to keep hold of him. It is worth noting that he's on four yellow cards as well. So he's only one game away from a suspension. But I think for a lot of people who got him at like 5.3 million or something like that, he's probably worth holding on to. But at the same time, if there's doubts there, your team can't cope with him missing out and you're a bit worried about the four yellows. You could sell him for someone cheaper, but I think for most people, I'd probably just keep him. Uh, Slot also said that Trent Alexander-Arnold is fit enough to start. Now, does that mean he'll definitely start? Not necessarily. I think if Bradley can't make it, and Bradley was a bit of a hamstring issue by the looks of it, that's more likely that Trent will start, but not a guarantee. But again, no one is buying him this week anyway. But he is kind of interesting from game weeks 14, 15 onwards. He's already down to 6.9 million. There is a chance he will drop to 6.8 soon. At that point... He's only like 0.4, 0.5 million more than Van Dyke. So I think Trent could be interesting soon, but not this week. If you've got Trent, is there reason to hold on to him? I think there is. If you didn't already get rid of him, now we know that he's potentially going to be back in the starting lineup against City. I would look to hold him for 14, 15 onwards. The usual caveat supply, right? If you need the money to fund the move because you really want Saka or whoever it might be, then I think Trent is still sellable. But if you haven't already done it, I'd be pretty tempted to hold on to him. So for Brighton, it looks like Dunk will be back in the squad for the Southampton game tonight. Hertzler said, last week I already said that Lewis will be an option, but this week he will be. Then apparently he laughed about it and said it will be like this, he will be back in the squad. Now that doesn't guarantee that he'll be back in the first 11, so it would still be risky to buy him. But if you've held on to him, there's probably no need to sell him because he's going to be back soon over this week or in game week 14. And the fixture run is pretty good. And if you're looking at picking up a Brighton defender soon, but not necessarily this week, definitely keep an eye on what happens with Dunk's minutes against Southampton. He's only 4.4 million, so he's cheaper than Van Heck. If you need to buy one this week and you're looking at Brighton defence, it's got to be Van Heck for safety at 4.5. Not a huge amount of goal threat whatsoever, but the fixtures are good. And Brighton defence is pretty decent so i quite like the van heck pickup this week if you're moving next week or game week 15 you could potentially look at dunk instead um Kadioglu may not be available so there's a possibility he's in the squad but not guaranteed and lamptey will be back in the squad now some people have mentioned to me about possibly going for eschapinian who's five million in the past we have seen him with very good attacking numbers this year so far 0.03 xg per 90 0.11 expected assists it's okay it's nothing special he's only started six times so maybe those numbers will go up as he plays more games i'm not convinced he's worth 
the five million. There's part of me that completely gets why people are looking at it because the next six fixtures overall are just decent and we know what he can deliver. I just don't know if he's... I don't know if his minutes are going to be good enough. Like, he has played, what is it now, 490 minutes in a row, which looks really good. But once Caliogla is back, he can play there. If Hinshelwood can get fit, he can play left back as well. Will Hertzler choose to rotate Estepinian in some of these games? Possibly. I mean, Lamptey could even play left back as well. It looks pretty clear right now that Estepinian's first choice. I just don't know if I can guarantee that forever or even over the next kind of four to six weeks. And for 0.5 million more than Van Heck, I'd want to know that he's definitely going to play. So Estepinian is probably someone for me to avoid. But I think there is potential upside. If, you, if you're more confident in the minutes than I am, there is definitely upside there at 5 million. I think I would prefer just to spend 0.5 million less on Van Heck. So let's get into some of your questions. My plan is to move Chris Wood to João Pedro in game week 14. Should I make the move this week or roll and stick to the plan? If you've not already made this transfer, I would just stick because you've already missed the João Pedro price rises ahead of game week 13. So he's gone from 5.5 to 5.7 already. He can't go up again before the deadline. And Chris Wood's got a really good fixture this week, Ipswich at home. And I would expect him to start. I know that he got benched last week. And if you're a Wood owner, you're probably slightly concerned. But most of the games he has started so far this season, 11 out of 12. It was just after an international break. Arsenal away. Awani came in. I don't think he played particularly well, although it was Arsenal. It's a difficult game. I think Chris will be back in. You just decide what to do in game week 14 instead. If it was a case that we were discussing this yesterday and we knew that Jao Pedro was going to go up in price, I would have maybe been a little bit more tempted. But I think at this point, you just wait and see what happens, right? One of your other forwards might get injured next week and they might be a better player to move for Jao Pedro instead so if i've got chris wood in most cases i'm probably just keeping him for ipswich then deciding what to do in 14 so what do we do with luca dean i bought him on wildcard now if you got him on wildcard recently it's probably not a major disaster because hopefully you pick four other nailed on defenders that can cover you over the next few weeks but obviously getting benched in game week 12 is not ideal so what do you do with him moving forward now i think and if i'm wrong please correct me in the comments aston villa fans Luca Dean is still first choice. He started in the Champions League midweek. I don't think much has changed in that regard. So most of the time, Luca Dean is going to play. I think when Matson has played, he's done well, but not to the point where he's going to become Aston Villa's first choice left back, at least not anytime soon. Now, this week is Chelsea away. So it's probably no need to panic because I wouldn't expect a clean sheet anyway. And the nice thing is, because you've got game week 14 as a midweek fixture, you might get a bit of a pattern over the next three game weeks. So he's just played in the Champions League. Does that mean Matson comes in against Chelsea? Not necessarily. If Luca Dean plays against Chelsea, there is maybe a good chance he gets benched against Brentford, but then there's a good chance he will play against Southampton, which is a pretty nice fixture. Likewise, if Matson comes in against Chelsea because Luca Dean's just played in the Champions League, there's a great chance he'll play against Brentford. And again, you can just play him in that fixture. So for most people, unless Luca Dean is crucial to your defence where you plan to play him every week, I just wouldn't panic. I'd wait to see what happens against Chelsea and then try and figure out the pattern over the next couple of weeks. If Matson keeps getting more and more starts in the league, then eventually Luca Dean will have to go. But I think for now, you can just use him as a bit of rotation and not really worry about the Chelsea game. If you are in a position where you need to sell him, well, I'm going to talk about cheap defenders later on but i think for most people you probably just hold for another week or two and then figure it out from there so when i said i was going to talk about cheap defenders later what i meant was right now so who's the best 4.4 to 4.7 million defender carl will van heck or lewis hall now the most interesting of the three of them is definitely lewis hall i think he's the most attacking so far this season he's putting up 0.18 expected goal involvement 4.4 is a nice price palace away is decent this week he does play liverpool at home in 14 so I guess if you want to play him every single week, that's not ideal. But over the next five game weeks, he looks pretty good. I'm still unsure how many more starts I need to see from him to think that he's absolutely nailed. But he has now started like nine of the 12 game weeks so far, including every match since game week six, which looks pretty good. It doesn't mean that something couldn't change in the future. Like if they get some centre-backs from injury, uh, 
centre-backs back from injury like Botman, then maybe Dan Byrne goes and plays left-back. But I think Lewis Hall's playing so well at the moment. I think it probably his, is his place to keep. I think with Van Heck and Colwell, they're not as exciting, definitely not as attacking, but they do have better fixtures in the short term, especially Brighton. There's no like Liverpool game or anything like that. And they're absolutely nailed on. Right? I just don't see Van Heck missing out whatsoever. Now, between Van Heck and Colwell, I think it's quite close in terms of who I would pick. With Chelsea, you do have the Spurs away game in 15, which is not ideal. But I think outside of that, like basically, the way I'm looking at it is, how many games would I ideally not want to play this defender in, right? Where it's a match like Spurs away, City away. For Chelsea... They've basically got two of them up until game week 23. So Spurs away in 50, Man City away in 23. Every other game in that run, I'd happily play Colwell. It doesn't mean that I expect a clean sheet every week. Like Villa at home is not easy. Uh, Fulham at home is not that easy either. Bournemouth as well. But most of the more difficult games are at home and the easier ones on paper are away, like Southampton, Everton, Ipswich and Palace. So I quite like Colwell. For Van Heck. How many games does he have that I wouldn't want to play him in up until game week 23? I guess Man United away in 22, Arsenal at home in 20, Villa away in 19. So maybe three versus Colwell. The only thing is some of the away games are a bit tougher, like Fulham away in 14. I think it's quite close. I think short term, like next four to six weeks, Van Heck is better. I think from now until like game week 23, Colwell is probably better. So I would... If it's this week, I would probably lean towards Van Heck. If you were buying next week, I'd probably lean towards Colwell. I Lewis Hall, I just find really I find it really difficult because every every week I feel like I've got another injury or another flag to deal with. And when that happens, I just push myself more towards taking the absolute safe pick. It's like last week when I went Saliba over Timber. I probably should never have bought an Arsenal defender in the first place, but I went for the ultra safe pick rather than the more exciting pick in case I had more stuff to deal with in the future. So if you're, <laughs> what, what's the what's the way to put this? If you're more of an interesting FPL manager than I am, I think you buy Lewis Hall. He's also cheaper as well, right? And more attacking. Otherwise, I think I'd buy Van Heck this week, probably Colwell if it was next week. So for my team, the plan is basically the same as what I talked through on the team selection video yesterday. I'm almost certainly going to do Strand Larson to Jao Pedro. Annoyingly, I knew there was a very good chance that Jao Pedro would go up in price last night, and I forgot to make the move. I had intended to get in there before he went up to 5.7 million. I watched the Man United game, and then not long after that, I just went to bed, so I just completely forgot about it. It is a bit annoying. The only good thing about missing that price rise is at least I get to listen to all the press conferences today before I make my move. If something else comes up instead, then I might be glad I didn't make the early transfer, but I probably should have done it. It's likely to be Strand Larson over Raul Jimenez just because long-term Raul Jimenez is better. I think he rotates quite nicely with um, Rogers on my bench. So it's going to be Raya, Saliba, Gabriel, triple Arsenal defence alongside Pinnock. Then i am still got the captain's armband on Palmer. I haven't seen anything to convince me otherwise, really. Unless Maresca puts doubts on his minutes today, I think I'm going to stick with that. I've got my vice captain on in Burma against Leicester at home. And I'm not really thinking about Salah captain at all. And again, like I said yesterday, because so many people are tempted by Salah now because of how well he's done and how many goals City are conceding, it almost makes me want to go differential. I'm not that happy about Bruno Fernandes, the way he's played you know, last night and the last 20 minutes against Ipswich, or basically the whole game against Ipswich was not great, but especially when he moved deeper. I think I probably will want to get rid of him next week. But this week, I don't have the spare slot to get Saka, and I don't want to take like a minus eight. I could just not get Jao Pedro, by the way, and just keep Strand Larson, and maybe do Saliba Fernandez to a different defender this week plus Saka. But I just don't think it's worth it. I'm just going to give Fernandez the chance to play as a number ten against Everton, and then decide what to do in game week fourteen. My likely move in fourteen will be Saliba out to another defender and Fernandez to Saka. I could just go for Son in one move, but I just know every week I don't have Saka, I'm probably going to regret it. And I probably should never have blocked myself off that move in the first place, as I discussed yesterday. So team looking pretty good. On the bench, it's Fabianski, Rogers, Greaves, and Lewis, which is not so ideal. Hopefully I don't need any of those players this week. So Strand Larson to Jao Pedro, 
Palmer captain, and next week possibly a hit for Bakayo Saka. Annoyingly, by the way, just to quickly talk about this, missing that price rise might cause an issue later on because if I'd done it before last night, next week, if I sell Fernandes instead of Imbermo, I, I basically could have afforded any defender for Saliba, including Trent, but now I... Sorry, not Salah. Uh, now I can't. So if I, if I do the... So if I get Jean Pedro at 5.7, I buy Saka at 10.2 for Fernandes and I take Saliba out... I've got 6.8 to spend. So that's any defender apart from Trent. Now, I don't necessarily want Trent for 13 or 14, but long term, I might want him and I quite like his price. Now, Trent 6.9, he might drop to 6.8, but by the time I want to make that move, when I've waited for all the weekend's games to finish, Saka will probably be 10.3. So it might actually cause a problem not having got Jao Pedro before his price rise, but obviously I could just go safer with like a Van Dyke. I could go ultra cheap, and have two million to upgrade another player later on. I haven't quite decided. I might even get to game week 14 and want to keep Fernandez and sell in Burmo instead. Let's just wait and see what happens. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Rate five stars if you're listening on podcast. I will be back later on today for the deadline stream. That is starting at 4:30 p.m. UK time. Um, otherwise, just check Fantasy Football Hub out. Link in the description below. 30% off at the moment, 30-day free trial for their Green Friday offer. And that's it. I will see you later. Good luck with your decisions.